in one go. If you think that most production yachts spend their time going backwards and forwards from Monaco to Saint-Tropez and from Fort Lauderdale to the Bahamas, you'd be right. That is what most of them do, but not all of them. And today I'm going to show you a yacht that has been from Fort Lauderdale to the Bahamas, but also from the Balearics to Barcelona. And today is in Monaco, preparing for a cruise to the Amalfi Coast with the owners on board. They're on board at the moment, as a matter of fact. That's how much they love this yacht. But they have given us permission to film and to show you all around. Kelly Ann is an example of a very successful production yacht. Built by Benetti, she's one of their 108-foot Tradition Supreme series of yachts. Very similar in appearance to all of the other Benetti Tradition Supremes, but totally unlike any other in her use. As most of the other yachts rack up the engine hours going backwards and forwards to the same locations, Kellyanne has gone onwards and onwards to new destinations and some wonderful cruising grounds. Before I tell you about the technical details of the yacht though, that allow her to do this, let's take a look at her layout from top to bottom. One of the distinguishing features of the Benetti tradition is her deck layout. The sun deck is situated aft, providing privacy for her owners and guests to enjoy sunbathing and refreshing in the jacuzzi tub, as well as a shady seating area to enjoy a burger from the barbecue. A few steps down take you to what I would consider as the flybridge deck, from where the captain can operate the yacht as guests enjoy watching the view if they wish to. The upper deck also sits on two different levels, with the forward section a little lower and housing the bridge that I found to be compact and functional. Good visibility all around from these vertical windows and even a seating area and a table from which to work. Moving aft, we find a few steps up to a wonderful sky lounge, light pouring in and a great area to enjoy the company of friends and family with a few drinks from a remarkably well-equipped open bar. This deck also benefits from its own day head. Elegant sliding glass doors then lead onto a full beam upper aft deck that I suspect is the usual location for dining on board. A table big enough for 10 people, a seating area for your pre-dinner cocktails. Who could ask for more? Each of these decks can be accessed either through an interior stairwell or from exterior stairs. And as we move down the exterior stairs to the main deck aft, we find a well-proportioned aft deck with a dining table. Note the ease of access to the winch and the cleats here too. Sometimes Italian builders hide these away. Benetti have done a good job of blending aesthetics with practicality. Before we look inside this deck though, let's go along the side decks to the bow, where not only do we find a very spacious sunbathing area, but look at this. Also steps leading up to another sunbathing area on the next deck. So many builders would have just left this area as white, gel-coated superstructure. Every inch seems to be well used on this yacht. Back to the aft deck though, and through the sliding doors we find an inviting and cosy main salon with two-tone woods and soft fabrics, along with another dining table comfortably large enough for 10 guests. From here, a short corridor leads to steps up to the upper deck, a day head, and then access to the owner's quarters with a walk-in closet, a really lovely bathroom, sizable shower, actually the shower was refit in 2020, providing more shower space and higher ceilings, and a fresh, relaxing stateroom that when the curtains are open have light flooding in from three huge windows. Back down the corridor, through the dining area, we have access to the galley, although I should say that this is accessed from the crew quarters and the bridge too. This is well lit, 
has a good food prep service and is equipped with the finest of equipment. Something less obvious here though is that the owner's bathroom that we saw earlier is located between the galley and the owner's cabin, acting as a sound buffer. Finally, we have the lower deck, where a central mirrored lobby area leads to four staterooms. Two twins, each with their own ensuite bathroom, and two doubles, again with well appointed ensuite bathrooms. Actually, with the owner on board and myself and the camera team filming the yacht, as you can imagine, the crew have been rather busy, so I've decided to spare them the tour of their living quarters. But I can tell you that they have a crew of six fantastic people in three cabins and with a crew mess. Now, when Kellyanne came over from the United States to the Med, she used a rather interesting system. She used a ship called Dock Express. That's called a self-sinking ship because it allows water into the hull so that yachts can literally sail right inside to the ship itself. And then when they get to their destination, they literally sail right outside of the ship. It's a fantastic system. And one of the crew members of Kellyanne were able to accompany her so they could keep her clean and do little maintenance jobs too. I'm really just telling you that because if it is your dream to cruise the world in a yacht, you don't have to brave the Atlantic Ocean on the yacht's bottom. The navigational equipment on Kellyanne is particularly interesting, so let's take a look around. The two large screens can be used for the radar, the GPS, the depth sounder, wind conditions, as well as a host of other features. The small screen to the left is for the CMC Marine electric zero speed stabilizers that work both underway and at anchor. And the screen on the right hand side surface is for monitoring of the engine parameters, tank levels, bilge pumps, fire systems, and other important alarms. Most of the equipment that you can see here is brand new as part of an upgrade to the yacht. In the engine room, we find two MAN 960 horsepower engines for a total of 1,920 horsepower. These will propel Kellyanne to a top speed of 15 knots. But remember, she's built for long range, so pull back to just 11 knots and she has a range of 2,000 nautical miles. Generators that you can see here are 50 kilowatts each. And the equipment that you can see here is called an Alpha Laval. In addition to the Raycor fuel filters that all yachts have, this equipment actually further cleans the fuel using centrifuge. It's a useful thing to have if you are cruising extensively. After the engine room is a transom garage. Benetti built this to house a tender, but like many others, the owner of Kellyanne preferred to have a 30-foot chase boat, and he converted the transom to house two jet skis. It's a great solution. Filming this yacht with the owner on board gave me a unique opportunity to get an owner's perspective as to why he bought this yacht rather than many of the others that were available to him. And when I spoke to him, his eyes lit up when he spoke about the deck space on Kellyanne, the interior volumes, the styling. But above all, this was a yacht that allowed him to live his dream. Now, from time to time, I get comments on the YouTube channel with people saying, well, if the yacht's that great, why are they selling it? And I understand that question, but in this case, the answer is very simple. The owner wanted to buy a yacht, cruise extensively with family and friends and enjoy himself. Well, now that adventure is drawing towards an end and he's enjoyed it so much. He wants to do it again at some point in the future. But right now, it's time for a new owner, for Kellyanne. And 
whether the new owner goes backwards and forwards from Monaco to Saint-Tropez or whether he continues to cruise extensively to Croatia and Greece and who knows, even beyond that, I can be sure that this will make him a wonderful platform on which to fulfil his dreams. If that's you, do contact one of my friends and colleagues, Wes Sanford and Kristen Klein, who represent the owner and can get you all the information you need to make a decision. Their email address is on the screen now.